Dr. Frank Mitlerner is a professor at UC Davis and an air quality extension specialist. This week, Chris Knight continues their compelling conversation about agriculture and the environment. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. So the real question isn't whether you just eat vegetarian versus eating animal protein. It really is whether you eat or not. Well, tell me, what do you think one of the reasons is that people worldwide are living longer? There's no doubt about it. In the developing world, it's definitely, it has a lot to do with animal protein. I found this study that came out uh, just two months ago, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, very interesting, very interesting, because it compared uh, our current diet, omnivore diet, mm -hmm. versus a vegan diet. If we were all to become vegan in the United States, no more livestock production, the carbon footprint of this country would go down by 2.6%. Is that nothing? No, it's not nothing, it's something, but I think we would agree it's quite small compared to, let's say, transportation, which is 26%. Right, so there's bigger fish to fry. In that study, how much more uh, land mass was required to, to, to grow vegetable matter necessary to feed 320 million people? This was another big finding, that if we were to go vegan as a nation, we would not be able to produce the nutrients needed for our citizens in this country. So we would have to import. We would have to import, correct. And there's another problem. Just like animals needing nutrients, crops of course need nutrients too to grow. You can have two types of fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, sometimes they are called synthetic fertilizers, and so-called organic fertilizers. The synthetic fertilizers are very energy intensive in, in their production, okay? But they're about 50% of the total fertilizer volume we use in the world. Organic fertilizers are all from livestock manure. So let's follow this through. So if we don't have any more livestock, because we've stopped eating proteins, and we're now forced then <coughs> to fertilize our crop, because somehow, miraculously, we're able to feed ourselves on that little bit of arable land, and it's just now chemical fertilizers we're using on it, what happens? What happens to the carbon footprint? What happens is that the uh, carbon footprint of crop production actually goes up pretty drastically because this chemical fertilizer requires a lot of energy to be produced. And that is uh, a driver of carbon emissions. But it's the truth. Crop production and livestock production are intimately are interwoven. Okay? Yeah. You cannot say, let's get rid of livestock without having a very important integral part of agriculture breaking apart and the whole system eroding. But if you had enough livestock, would you, could you? Yeah. In other words, it's not a matter of, of there's other things that livestock manure won't give no. you in the way of nutrients. No. Uh, but if you had enough livestock, you could actually not have to do any chemical fertilizer. Correct. Actually, livestock manure is excreted in a ratio of nutrients that's perfect for crops. So I would nitrogen. imagine so because it was sort of natural before we came on. It's very interesting to me, you know, when I go visit organic farms, I always ask them, so where do you receive your nutrients? And so after some time uh, and some discussions, I get to the truth and the truth is most of that manure comes straight from conventional, not from organic, from conventional livestock farms. I want to thank you today for joining us. I think that uh, our eyes are a lot more open after having this conversation with you. Makes me very happy. Thank you for coming and I appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. And that has been Pork Chops and Applesauce, quite an education. Thank you for joining us.